conference season, the focus on the Big 12, on the SEC, and it has produced some excellent matchups, and I think this one is right there at the top. I love these cross-conference matchups here, right in the heart of league play. Gives these teams a great chance to test themselves five weeks before the NCAA tournament. So here we go. It's loud inside Reed Arena, but Iowa State will have the first possession of the game. One of the matchups I'll keep my eye on today is George Niang right there in the post against Jalen Jones. Two different style players, but two of the best as Niang makes his first move, misses the shot, and the Aggies have the rebound. Morris Thomas, Nader, Niang, McKay, the starting five. There was some question about Jamil McKay. Meanwhile, Caruso, Collins, House, Jones and Davis very talented starting five for Texas A&M Texas A&M really has one of the most underrated front courts in all of college basketball with house Jones and the big freshman Tyler Davis well, there's a three look Jalen Jones misses the first shot for the Aggies Dante Morris Miles mentioned those numbers for him he has seemed like he's played his best ball against their best opponents. Nader, that's a size mismatch, and right away, Abdul Nader takes advantage of it. We had Iowa State two weeks ago during their last loss against Texas, and Coach Prome told us he needed Abdul Nader to be more on attack mode, not settling for so many three-point shots. He's done that during their winning streak. Jones, who loves attack mode, scores. Jalen Jones. Really talented forward, can put the ball on the floor, knock down the threes, gets in the paint right there. Here's Nader against Caruso. Nader going to go to the bucket, not settling for the jumper. They wave off the basket and call it an offensive foul. Well, Nader had the right idea right here. He drives Jones, he drives Caruso. Caruso moves his feet very well right there, takes it right to his chest. Good call by the official. Now for the Aggies, maybe feeling like a little bit of payback. There was a very questionable call near the end of their loss on Wednesday at Arkansas that went against them. That was a big factor, and it was a block charge call that went against them in deciding that game. Caruso, three. Off iron. Ethan. Good action, good bounce pass by Thomas. Morris not able to finish, but McKay cleans it up. This time McKay, with Davis trying to post up again, came in front, stole the ball away. Well, that's really unlike Collins. He has a three to one assist to turnover ratio to throw that ball away. McKay facing up against Jones. One dribble, he traveled. McKay saying that just shoot the ball which <laughs> if he'd done it wouldn't have been a travel there was some question about Jamil McKay would he be available he's had some tendonitis in his left knee he looked good yesterday and is on the court very important player for a team that's not real deep Thomas got a hand on the pass knocked it out of bounds and you see what Iowa State's going to do in the post-up situations there Anthony Collins is a guy that doesn't shoot the basketball a lot, only has taken six field goals in the last three games. They are bringing Monte Morris to double down in the post, and then they weren't going to rotate to Collins and dare him to shoot the basketball. Caruso, house open on the skip pass. Some pretty good looks for house early in this one. Niang on the move. That is classic George Niang. Monte Morris, there might not be a better two-man game in the country than Monte Morris and George Niang. They're excellent in the pick and roll, and then Niang can make so many plays on that throwback. So experienced, you see the number he's won so many games. That's a foul against AM. Davis fighting for low post position. And here's the decision right here that you have to make. Can you switch that with Collins where Niang will put him in the post? They do a slight hedge, not enough of a help by House. He has to stunt a little bit more over to Niang, and that leaves an open driving, driving lane. Tough to guard. Those two. Here they'll dribble weave into an action, and then you'll watch for a ball screen's going to end up coming. Off the look from Niang. McKay fighting for the rebound. Had it ripped away. They'll call jump ball, though. The arrow does favor.
Texas A&M. Morelos gets the possession back for the Aggies. Timeout here in College Station. Between two of the best teams in all of college basketball, Texas A&M probably not getting enough love on the national stage, being that they're the number five team in the country and leading the SEC, Iowa State, on a hot streak. Nice move and the finish from Daniel House, senior big-time scorer for the Aggies. Great explosiveness, quick first step by House, and the burst to the rim and the huge dunk. Uh, you see the resumes, Thomas Long, three good Matt Thomas who can be so deadly from the outside. Well, in that situation, if you're Jalen Jones, you have to know who you switched on. You were guarding Niang, and then you switch out on the Matt Thomas, one of the best three-point shooters on this Cyclone team. You can't have your hands down. Iowa State, one of the hottest teams in the country, looking for a third win in the last couple weeks against a top-five opponent. Meanwhile, a &M, Caruso, three. Tipped by Jones and a foul against the Cyclones. Churchill Morelos, good work on the offensive glass. And here's the ball reversal right here. And then the quick rip through. Jameel McKay has to be two steps over into the help side, but Daniel House, there was almost nothing you were going to be able to do about that as he's one of the best athletes in the SEC. All SEC performer last year, likely will be one again this year for the team that leads the SEC. Caruso, and it's stripped away, and Thomas saves it in bounds. And there's where Matt Thomas is most improved in his game this offseason. The defensive end did a good job against Jared Udoff in the second half in a comeback win against Iowa and did an excellent job against Buddy Heald earlier in conference play. Caruso steals it right back. Nice bounce pass. House, another one. Here's Monte Morris, Abdul Nader, back to Morris, who's been shooting so well from three, not that time. Anthony Collins, Miles mentioned him right at the top, a player that a &M needs to be a little more aggressive, a little more productive. Jones, tough shot, no good. And Trocha Morelos with the foul. Man, he's giving them good energy off the bench. Nader to cut. I was trying to yell at him. Nader couldn't hear him. He's too loud. Another good lead pass. House feeling it. Not from the outside this time. Good hustle by Jones. Jones, such an energy guy, the emotional leader for this team. Billy Kennedy described that he only plays at one speed, and that's fast, and he plays really hard. Well, Jalen Jones gives it up. Really like a double point guard look for the Aggies with Caruso and Collins. The big man shoots a three, not a great shot, and way off the mark. Texas A&M doing an excellent job of getting back in transition and making Iowa State play in the half court. They're doing a lot of things well. They're just not making threes. They're 0 for 7 at the start of this game. Niang, three on the other end for the Cyclones. And there's Jones again with a late closeout. Niang, obviously, if he can get his feet set, he has a little bit of a slower release. Jones needs to get there with his hands up, make him put it on the floor. Jones couldn't get the friendly roll. Okay, finds a way to get the loose ball. Here come the Cyclones. Thomas just testing the range, came up way short. Now he's going to hear about that one for the rest <laughs> of this game. Matt Thomas already hit a three. Iowa State two of six. Texas A&M 0 for 7 from three-point range in the first eight minutes. Well, the Aggies now bringing in one of their best shooters out of a, a highly rated recruiting class. D.J. Hogue, number one, 6'7", wing player. Burton can't lose track of him. House against a double team draws a foul. And it didn't look like there was a lot there, but Daniel House earns his way to the free throw line. Timeout in College Station. Iowa State on the road leads by two.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonic. Two can eat for $9.99 at Sonic all month long. And the all-new Audi Q7. Atmosphere in College Station sold out crowd for the fifth ranked Aggies at home against number 14 Iowa State Cyclones with a two point lead. 11.49 to go. Miles Simon talked about hey, maybe not enough people are talking about Texas AM. Part of the reason could be a couple of early losses. This is a team that did not go to the NCAA tournament last year, but now the highest ranking in school history up to fifth ranked team in the country. First SEC loss though on Wednesday snapped the 10 game winning streak, so now trying to avoid a losing streak, and it won't be easy against a road-tested, tough Iowa State team. I've really been impressed in watching Texas A&M this year, especially the few games that I watched them on film. Jalen Jones and Daniel House, Daniel House and Tyler Davis, one of the most impressive front lines in all of college basketball. All those guys average double figures. They're versatile in what they do and in that they're, they're different. Davis is a beast down low and Jones and House interchangeable at those forward positions. Well, I think Miles, one of the themes of the season so far in college hoops, the experienced players playing so well, the seniors. And I think these two teams are very emblematic of that as Nader on the move with the foul. Abdul Nader, that was impressive. Dave, I talked about it earlier. Coach Prohm has emphasized to Abdul Nader about being more aggressive, putting pressure on the rim. And you couldn't put more pressure right there than what Nader did. But how about that pass from Niang? A left-handed pass from about 22 feet away, right on the money to Nader. He did miss the free throw, so no three-point play. Rob House, his third dunk already. Abdul Nader just got caught ball watching right there. Deontay Burton off the bench with a quick shot. He is a talented kid. Yeah, really, and this is one thing that hasn't changed since Coach Prohm took over, kind of the ISO situations, the way they keep the floor spread, and there's another turnover by Collins. And as we go back to the lob to Daniel House, look at Abdul Nader right there, just ball watching. He's not in a ball you man scenario. And then Daniel House with the perfect read and the quick step for the back door. And Nader takes a seat on the bench. Jordan Ashton, who does not get a lot of minutes, is in the game for Iowa State. And he has not played much at all since the early part of the season. Well, he got his opportunity to play when Hallis Cook was suspended a few games ago, and Ashton just really hasn't hurt the team when he's been out there on the floor. He's going to take a shot from the corner, misses the three. I think AM will live with that one. Collins so quickly into the front court. Along the baseline, block shot, Burton swats it away. Admon Gilder, the freshman from Dallas, who is a nice young scorer. Gilder's a guy that they're tremendously high on. Madison High School won two state titles there. Averaged 31 points per game as a senior. Kind of comes in as tries to be an instant offense guy for the Aggies. You know, one advantage of having the two-point guard system, Caruso and college, you can give one a breather and keep the other one on the floor. So Caruso comes back in and gives Collins a rest. Caruso found an opening. Well, this time as Monte Morris gets caught ball watching and Texas A&M players moving really well without the basketball. Here's Burton. He's got a big time strength advantage against Hogue, but he settled for the jump shot. Gilder thought about the three in transition. House has been all over the place. House wants to score. He has the ultimate green light for this Aggie team. He's a tough shot maker and a tough shot taker. Sometimes maybe the raw shooting percentages get hurt by that fact, but. Oh, down low, not a great pass. Out of bounds with four on the shot clock. House and Trocha Morelos will go to the bench. Late, late clock here, look for four seconds. Watch for Caruso or Gilder to get the basketball for the Aggies. Steve Prohm gets Jamil McKay back in the game, so Niang will take a rest. Coaching matchup also a big part of the story of this one. Caruso, couple dribbles, got to get a shot off, gets to the rim and scores. 
too easy. If you're Iowa State, you got to corral that high ball screen with limited time on the shot clock. So now AM back up by a point. Burton. Morris. Cyclones lead again. Morris is so good. Yep. He's great in the pick and roll. He takes his time, doesn't rush things, gets into the seam of the defense and delivers a perfect pass to Burton. Gilder almost fell down. Hogue. That three off iron. And Burton rips the ball away. Deontay Burton given quality minutes off the bench. Morris, a rare mistake by him. And good hustle by Tyler Davis, the freshman big man to get back. Moore sometimes has a tendency to leave the floor to make passes. If he stayed on his feet there, probably wouldn't have made that turnover. Uh, Deontay Burton's playing good defense out here. Another block shot for him. Burton's a guy who kind of feeds off what he does on the offensive end. Chrome ran two plays for him when he first came in the game. He made one of those shots. That energized Burton on the defensive end. Eight minutes to go first half, just what we expected. We got a good one against the shot blockers. They all paid attention to Morris, so McKay was there, but his tip did not go in, and now Jones comes away with it. Three on two. Jones doesn't give it up, draws the foul. Now that will send us to a timeout here in College Station. Up and down, back and forth. Iowa State leads by one. Sure, one of them, Iowa State on the road. Number 14 team of the country against Texas A&M. Coach is a big part of the story of this matchup. For more on that, let's welcome in Jeff Goodman. Yeah, these two guys, Billy Kennedy of Texas A&M, Steve Prohm, have known each other almost 20 years. Prohm was an assistant for Kennedy at Centenary when Prohm wasn't paid a dime. Kennedy made $39,000 a year. Then they went to southeastern Louisiana together. Then they went to Murray State. Eventually, Kennedy left for Texas A&M. Prohm took over at Murray State, got the job at Iowa State this year. And they said it's surreal right now because, again, almost 20 years ago, they were making nothing. Now they're both making over a million dollars coaching two top 15 teams. And Jeff, these are two of the best guys in the business. Not two of the best coaches, but just two of the best people in all of college basketball. State ball tie game 18 18. Nader Morris and now Burton for three. Good rebound from Jalen Jones. Good defensive possession by the Aggies. Cut off a couple drives and then make Burton take a contested three. I don't think if you're the Cyclones, you can keep George Niang on the bench much longer. Uh, he's at the scorer's table now, trying to come back in this game. Davis down low against the shot blocker, Jameel McKay. Oak into the corner for a three look and a good one. AM still has not hit a three. They're 0 for 9. And yet they're tied. That was a wild shot from Abdul Nader. And those are the ones that you don't need if you're Iowa State. Run your offense there. You're shooting a contestant shot and, and begging for a foul from the official. And in some ways, Steve Prohm, we talked to him about that. Just knows that a couple of those a game are coming. Oh, Nader was late to close out on the three-point shooter. And that's such a positive sign for Hogue, who's been struggling from behind the arc. Two for ten from the three in his last three games. Kick ball as Burton tried to enter it to McKay. The Yang will come back in the game, as Miles said. Can't keep him on the bench for very long. This is DJ Hogue. Well, just the fact that Caruso turned the corner on that side ball screen and got to the elbow, he sucked in the Iowa State defender just enough to give Hogue room to get that shot off. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Niang matched up against Jones. That's a blocking foul on Jalen Jones, and he very much disagrees. Cannot believe it. Well, Jones does a pretty good job of moving his feet and showing his hands. I don't know what else you can really do in that situation unless they were calling the slap there at the end, but that wasn't much. A hard time getting the ball in bounds. So the energy level is picked up for Texas A&M. Iowa State, one field goal in the last about five minutes of game action for them. That's a long drought. This Texas A&M team is one of the best defensive teams in the SEC. Lead the conference in defensive efficiency. 
And Iowa State is certainly one of the better offensive teams in the country. Thomas, one dribble, three. And see, they got to be out on that. They, there has to be a decision made when it's Thomas and Niang in the pick and roll or a dribble handoff action because Thomas can come off and shoot that basketball. He's playing with the most confidence in his Cyclone career. Davis, high post area for him. Hogue, the shooter we were talking about, big time high school player Jones from a long way out. Rebound tip to Hogue. That's a foul against the Aggies. I think that is Jalen Jones. And they call that one on Caruso, not Jones. So I think that's good news for Texas A&M. Jones, who has a tendency to get into foul trouble. Mater between the legs. Nice pass. Offensive foul, though. Niang had the layup. Well, it was a good idea by Nader, the excellent change of direction, and then the excellent help side there by Jones to put his body in front and sacrifice. He sold it, but you're right, he was in the right position. And he was outside of the restricted arc. Caruso picks up his dribble a long way from the basket. He'll get it back from Davis. I'd love to see Davis get a touch on the block. He's been out in this area of the court for a while now. Tip up. Hogue saves it to Jones. Scores. If you notice right now with Texas A&M, a big lineup in the game. Something that they haven't played with a ton. Wow. Now that looked like contact. Niang looking for the whistle. No call. Just a turnover. Sixth turnover for Iowa State. And when I say a big lineup for the Aggies, everybody 6'5 or bigger on the floor right now. They pounded him on the offensive glass the last possession. They can do more switching on the defensive end because of the versatility of Hogue, House, and Jones. Cyclones are having a hard time on the defensive glass right now, hanging with these big Aggies. There's Davis, and that's a foul against Texas A&M. So a lot of whistles coming down in the last few minutes. And that was just, they called a moving pick, or they called him getting his elbow extended out when he went to set the cross screen. Well, that's House's second. That's a big call against Texas A&M. House made eye contact with his coach, Billy Kennedy, said, I'm good, you can leave me in. Dallas Cook, good entry pass. Niang, though, had nowhere to go, turned it over. Hogue, three, in and out. Another offensive board. Davis draws the foul. Well, we got a great day of college hoops. And, of course, the three games tonight, Oklahoma, LSU, Kentucky, Kansas on the college side, both games on ESPN. Spurs, Cavs, our new Saturday night package on ABC at 8.30 in Cleveland. That's a heck of a matchup there. A day full of basketball, college, and pro. How fun are those games going to be? You got Buddy Heald and Ben Simmons, who obviously I think both of them are going to have tremendous games because they are the leading candidates for National Player of the Year. But big difference in those games, I think it's going to be how Isaiah Cousins and Tim Quarterman play. And then on the, uh, the next game, Kentucky and Kansas. Kentucky playing much better. Tyler Ewell is playing excellent. Derek Willis has been a tremendous spark since being inserted into the starting lineup, but always tough to go into the fog and trying to get a win. I mean, a few weeks ago, you might have said, man, Kentucky, they had no chance to go on the road and beat Kansas. Based on the last couple weeks, right, that should be a really close competitive game. And I, this Big 12 SEC challenge, I know coaches have resisted it in the middle of conference play, tough games, hard to get wins. For college basketball fans, tremendous. Second free throw for the young big man, Tyler Davis, made them both. I really like Tyler Davis. He's going to be a stud in this program for a long time to come. Great hands and feet. Only played one year of varsity basketball, but won a state title and was Mr. Basketball in Texas. They have recruited at such a high level these last couple of years. Talent level has really gone up in College Station. 
Cook open for three. Hallis Cook from outside, and those are points that Iowa State doesn't expect. Really a tremendous bonus. Hallis Cook is, was in the doghouse for a little while, lost his playing time to Jordan Ashton. But I love to see the young man come off the bench and be ready to perform. Jones, much too strong. Niang really dared him to take that shot. That's a lob play. McKay couldn't finish, though. Back in the game for Caruso, calls out a set play in the half court. Jones gets it right back from Hogue. Cut off. Now Collins, who was open, didn't shoot. A pushing foul against Iowa State. So another timeout here at Texas A&M where the Aggies lead by one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. That Buddy Heald has put on the 46 points at Kansas really put him out there in the forefront. Anthony Collins makes the front end of a one and one. So Texas A&M in the bonus. Both teams in the bonus for the final 323. And Texas A&M not shooting the ball well one for 13 from three and yet they lead here at home by a couple of points Well, they've done a great job on the defensive end. They've taken Iowa State completely out of transition It's pretty much been a half-court game, which I really think benefits the Aggies Niang three that one too strong Jones hustles after the rebound The game very much played at the style at the pace of Texas A&M. Gilder, good defense from Matt Thomas. Now Collins late shot clock finds Jones, the long two is good. Heck of a move there by Anthony Collins. He gets low on his dribble, the beautiful split and then finds Jalen Jones spotting up at 17 feet. They want more out of Anthony Collins, whether it's passing or scoring. Morris McKay tried to tip his own miss. He interfered with it. So no bucket. But Jamil McKay can't believe the shot didn't go in. Well, here you see Anthony Collins with the late shot clock. The beautiful between the legs draws three defenders to him. And Jones was just shot ready and knocks it down. And here's something from Iowa State that they've kind of implemented in the last couple weeks. It helps save the legs on the defensive end. It gives a little bit of a changeup. They go 2-3 zone. Gilder over to Collins. Watch for Hogue. He skipped it to Hogue. Jones got knocked to the ground. And they call that a foul. And Jalen Jones will go to the free throw line. You mentioned how hard he plays. It has been nonstop since the beginning of this one. Love watching this young man play. Got to talk to him for quite a while after practice yesterday. Grew up in a military family. Was born in Northern California. Spent some time in Alaska. We actually shared a story about our time in Alaska. I played in the Great Alaska Shootout. And the moment that I remember is hanging out with some Alaska Anchorage players and seeing some mooses just walking down the street. And I don't know if you've ever seen a moose in, per in person. Dave. I have, yes. They are huge. They, they are. And they yes. are dangerous. And Jalen Jones <laughs> was telling me, he's like, every day on the news, especially in the wintertime, you see stuff about mooses hurting people up there. And uh, But he's a really fascinating young man and a great player on top of that. Finding common ground. <laughs> Niang got called for that last foul. He's back on the bench. His second Morris was, you couldn't tell, was he going to lob it to McKay or shoot it? He shot it. That was the right decision. Beautiful. He's so good in the pick and roll. And that's why I think he can play in the NBA because he can shoot that ball at the pick and roll. He's an excellent passer and doesn't turn it over. If you can run pick and roll, you can play in the NBA. Gilder with the shot fake. Gilder kind of out of control. Got his own miss, though. Out of bounds off of Texas A&M. 
I look at Matthew Delavadova, a good example of that guy. Not a lot of folks gave a chance to play at that NBA level, but he's so good at the pick and roll. He, he's on a good team, but he's found a spot. Yeah, and even a guy, what about a guy like TJ McConnell, who made the Sixers this year? Good defender, smart passer, and didn't turn the basketball over. Just about a minute to go in the first half. Alice Cook almost dribbled it away. Morris went right by Collins. Another one of those runners. And for people that can't shoot that shot, you don't understand how difficult that was. He was going full speed, stopped on a dime from 8 to 10 feet, and floated it up with a soft touch. Beautiful basketball by Monte Morris. Now Billy Kennedy calls a quick timeout. A quick timeout for us. We'll be right back for the final 44 and a half seconds. Monte Morris and the Cycler to Eastern. A night for basketball, college, and NBA. And a great college matchup here. Caruso out of the timeout. Three, no good. Thomas grabs the rebound. And now there's just a tiny difference between game clock and shot clock. And in essence, Iowa State can hold for the final look. And I gotta imagine it'll be a high ball screen. Maybe in a stack ball screen they've run the last couple times down with Burton and McKay both coming up to set the pick. All right now Steve Crone wants him to go. Morris pulls up that shot way too strong. Burton offensive rebound and the dunk finish. As the horn sounds, what an ending to the first half. Deontay Burton, a heck of a play. That's a big-time play by Deontay Burton, not giving up on the basketball, going and seeking it out, using his elite athleticism, and then going up strong and throwing it down hard and sparking the Cyclones into the second half. Well, just what we hope for, a tie game between two of the best in the country. It is halftime. The Aggies go into their locker room. And guess what? Our own Jeff Goodman, he's going to be in the locker room with Billy Kennedy and his Texas A&M team. So we'll see Jeff at the start of the second half with a report on what the Aggies were talking about. Miles Simon will be in the locker room for the Cyclones and Iowa State. There's Jeff. He's getting in there. 30-30. That's the score. Now the Jeep Halftime Report will send you back to the studio and Chris Cotter. Station. We got a good one. Tie game start of the second half. Iowa State and Texas and m Dave Fleming, Miles Simon, Jeff Goodman back here inside Reed Arena. And Miles, you were in the locker room with Iowa State. 
for the halftime. What did the Cyclones talk about? Well, the first thing that I noticed is before the coaches got in, the players were very intense and vocal with each other. They were coaching each other up. And then Coach Prome on the defensive side of the ball said they need to box out and get back in transition. And on the offensive side, more spacing and look for more ball reversal. Meanwhile, Jeff, you were inside the Aggies locker room. What they have to say? Yeah, Billy Kennedy's big message was, listen, this is our house. We're going to make shots. He also said they've got to make sure that Monty Morris can't just do what he wants on that ball screen. Go out. Don't let him dictate everything. At the end of it, Miles, you know what he says? Have fun, guys. And watch for this first play. Keep your eye on Jameel McKay, number one right there with a the rim run. Well, they found him. He couldn't dunk it on the catch, but he dunks it after coming to the floor. How about that? Great execution out of the halftime locker room. Coach Prome had called that play up to his team, and they executed perfectly. So that puts Iowa State ahead by two. Nice little set play. House skips it over to Caruso. House contested two in and out. Nice spin move from George Niang. There was an adjustment there by the Aggies. They weren't switching that ball screen in the first half. They switch at that time. Collins couldn't get the steal. Niang makes them pay. So this is the biggest lead for Iowa State. Just four. It's been a close game all the way through. How about the persistence of Jones? But the Aggies can't score. But Jones almost goes up in there trying to get a foul instead of taking it up strong and trying to finish right at the rim and taking the hit second. Now the Cyclones have the first four points of the second half, and they have the ball. If I'm Iowa State, I put Niang back in another ball screen and see how they guard it. Instead, they enter it to him down low on the block against Jones. He uses that little hook move. Jones rebound. Iowa State looking for a third straight win against a top five team. A&M undefeated at home. Iowa State trying to be the first team to come here and win. See, Collins needs to be some type of threat on the offensive end of the floor. They're almost playing four on five on the offensive end because Jones. Monte Morris can back off. Yeah, Jones just can't believe that he missed that one. Morris, no good. But off of Caruso, Davis fighting him for the ball. It's still Iowa State's. Well, looks at the rim for the Aggies. And yet no points yet in the first two minutes of the second half. Now a whistle and a foul against Jones trying to guard Niang. His second foul. Mader, no good. Not a great shot. You don't need it. It's a contested shot. It's the thing Coach Pullum said in the locker room. Ball reversal, spacing, move the move the ball, and that will move the defense. Little shot fake, and then the spin move from the freshman Tyler Davis. So impressive for how big this young man is. He's 6'10, 265, puts the ball on the floor. McKay just doesn't move his feet well enough in this case. And Davis takes that contact and is now going to the line to try to finish the three-point play. Tyler Davis, a young man that's lost nearly 100 pounds in the last couple years. He was up around 350. Now he's down to about 260. Really changed his body, cut the sweets and the junk food out, the fried food. And he's turned himself into a heck of a basketball player. McKay should attack. Yeah, McKay traveled. Jeff? Yeah, Jamil McKay hurt his left knee about two and a half weeks ago in practice, uh, has tweaked it since. He started the game with a knee brace, shed it early in that first half, still appears to be moving a little bit gingerly. Yeah, I do think it's a good point. He has not looked like himself in this game. I mean, he's suffering from tendonitis, and I've suffered from that myself in both of my knees. Great penetration right there. But it happens on little quick bursts, and it's a like a shocking pain that you have and beautiful transition basketball for Iowa State. Meanwhile, Caruso's not going to slow down with the foul. Man, in the blink of an eye. Well, 
Well, Alex Caruso may be the most important piece on this team, one of the most versatile players going coast to coast right there, changes hands in midair, and the beautiful finish for the College Station native. The kid who grew up around this program, in this town with his dad, a big part of the athletic program, and has become a heck of a player for the Aggies. He's the active leader in the NCAA in steals. Morris with that screen game with Niang. Lob McKay, it's in and out. McKay is so frustrated right now. Now a whistle away from the ball. And that one's going against Iowa State. Well, look at this. This is executed perfectly. The beautiful touch pass. And McKay just can't finish it as it rattles in and out. And he's frustrated by that play. Jameel McKay averaging right around 13 points, right around nine rebounds. George Niang just picked up his third personal, and he goes to the bench, so that's not good news for Iowa State. Deontay Burton in off the bench. Burton played well in the first half. But now we'll really need to monitor how this score or game shifts without Niang, best player for the Cyclones, and leader not on the floor. Burton almost stole that away. They go right over top. That's easy. He got position against Jamil McKay. There was nothing McKay could do about it. Wide open three, Nader good. And why does that happen? Because Monte Morris in the ball screen attracts so much attention that it leaves Nader wide open. Jalen Jones off the feed from Collins. The pace and the intensity of this game has been ratcheted up here in the first four minutes of the second half. Big time. Shot clock starting to wind down. There's Morris again. A foul on the floor. Well, Tyler Davis, the freshman for the Aggies, has really come to life as the intensity has picked up the big man. And Miles, he is. He's playing like it here in the second half. A heck of a game. Iowa State on the road against the top five team, Texas A&M. Tie game, 39-39. Deontay Burton got fouled. And we've seen some examples, Miles, of what Tyler Davis was talking to you about. Well, he really does a great job of using his body. This was in the first half. He gets Jamil McKay on his backside, keeps moving his feet, posts up, sit in a stance nice and low. And then here in the second half, he, he rode him up the lane one time, showed a target hand, and the Aggies delivered it perfectly. Two shots for Deontay Burton. He began his career at Marquette, now with Iowa State. Kid from Milwaukee, a powerful athletic player, and by far their most productive player off the bench. Yeah, and he's really given him quality minutes the last couple games. He's gone seven for ten from the field, had nine points versus Kansas. Bill Self, after that win against Kansas for Iowa State just this last week, Bill Self talked about Deontay Burton after the game. He thought he was the key to that comeback. Gave him a huge spark. Cyclones playing defense, leading by one. Caruso, good defense by Nader there. Now Hogue, closer to the basket, rejected by McKay. Great help side by McKay, but an excellent job by Matt Thomas in the post to move his feet, show his hands, and play defense with his showing his chest. Morris was fouled. Well, Jamil McKay, this was more like the McKay that we've seen these last couple years. Well, he's the reigning Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, and he was just kind of laying in the weeds right there, waiting for that shot to go up, and an excellent job of waiting until it gets out of the hand of the Aggie player. And I do, Jeff made the point a few minutes ago, now they put the ball down, <laughs> forced Thomas to pick it up, start that five-second count, but that knee is bothering McKay. He's not 100%. Thomas picked up the dribble. They're just going to hand it back and forth. Now Thomas travels. That was not beautiful offense from the Cyclones. And a lot of times when Niang goes out of the game, the offense looks a little bit out of sync. Morris has to have the ball in his hands a little bit more in this case. 
Now there's George D. Yang with three personal fouls. 11 Iowa State turnovers. Yankees have protected the ball. Now there's one thing Texas A&M does well as a defense, force those turnovers. He can make so, that shot. Yeah, the big man makes it. Trosha Morelos really improved his perimeter game in the offseason. Fans did not hear the whistle. There was a foul on the floor before that clean block. Trosha Morelos didn't make a three last year as a freshman. He was 0 for 5. This year, 45% from behind the arc. Gets his feet set in that case. They dared him to make the shot, and he knocked it down. So he's given quality minutes off the bench himself. Hogue's second personal foul. Thomas catch and shoot off the side of the backboard. That's the second time in this half right off an inbound play with a new shot clock. There's been a quick three missed by the Cyclones. Coach Morelos this time for two. No good. And Niang back in the game grabs the board. Give Jamil McKay a rest. Morris, what a move to go right by Collins. Just that hesitation dribble, the change of speed, and then the burst to the rim. Trocho Morelos, that same spot. Nobody else for AM making threes. It's the big man who's hit two in the last minute. Now playing defense against Niang, who goes right by him, scores with the reverse to quiet the crowd. And Niang coming up hobbling down the floor. That's bad news for Iowa State. They cannot afford to lose him. They can't afford to lose anybody. Caruso traveled. Well, Niang with the nice drive right here gets all the way to the other side of the rim. And he just comes up hobbling a little bit. Doesn't look like he came down on anybody's foot. Yeah, he's still limping, though. One of the best all around players in the country. Here's Burton. Oh, God, him. A travel on Iowa State. And here's Burton with that drive to the hoop. A little hesitation, changes direction. One, two, no travel. Sometimes these officials, just because it looks awkward and he slowed down his steps, that was not a travel by Burton there. Iowa State showing some zone defense on this possession. Hogue will shoot over top the zone. Good look from Niang. Nader, no good. Here come the Aggies up by four with the shot starting to go in, but a turnover and a very dangerous pass. Caruso, great hustle. It'll stay Iowa State ball, but that would have been a layup. Four point lead for AM. Chris Lafonso, thanks. Four point lead for Texas AM, undefeated at home. George Niang off the inbound play, gets called for the offensive foul. That's his fourth foul, and he's going to have to go to the bench. That is a big blow for the Cyclones. And Dave, that was great scouting report defense right there. They worked on guarding that play yesterday, and they know when Niang gets in an ISO situation, he wants to drive right. Trosha Morelos beats him to the spot, shows his hands, 
perfect defense. You see the guy sitting next to Niang who's now on the bench, Naz Long. Part of the reason why Iowa State doesn't have depth is Burton steals it away. Look at Deontay Burton, man. Tremendous athleticism once again. What a game Deontay Burton is having. Look at that elite athleticism to take the hit, jump from near the outside the lane, and throw it down with the contact. Burton with a huge spark for the Cyclones. Wow. Well, Jeff, Deontay Burton really has become so important for this Iowa State team. Yeah, the Marquette transfer was eligible to break and is huge because this Iowa State team, as you guys mentioned, does not have a lot of depth. The key for Burton, playing with energy consistently. He didn't do it for a stretch of about three or four games in early January. He's doing it today. He is. He well, has really been important for them this afternoon. Well, I think one thing that really sparks Burton playing with energy is when he gets touches on the offensive end. He's a guy, he's a natural scorer. He's a mismatch problem. And when he's doing well on the offensive end, the defensive end really picks up for him. Shooting the ball well. And you see the physicality. There just aren't many players his size who can do what he did just a moment ago. How about Caruso did everything but finish? Now Nader leads the break. Finds Thomas three. Good. How versatile are some of these Iowa State Cyclone forwards? We saw Burton with the steal and the dunk. Nader takes the defensive rebound and hits Matt Thomas in the corner for a transition three. And every time it feels like one of these teams is going to open the game up a little bit, it gets tight again. It's been that way the whole way. House challenged by McKay. That was great defense. This almost looks like a completely different team than we saw a couple weeks ago down in Austin. Yep. They were trade willing to trade basket for basket. You can tell Iowa State has more pride on the defensive end. Eight ties, 12 lead changes. Now Burton along the baseline. McKay got his hands on it. McKay scores. Now a timeout. Texas A&M has seen Iowa State go on a little run. Miles Simon, Jeff Goodman back here in College Station, Iowa State. Our TD Ameritrade pivotal moment. Niang goes to the bench with four fouls. They go on a run. Yeah, they were down four when Niang goes down, and Deontay Burton picks up the slack right away with the dunk. And then Nader to Thomas in transition. And then one more time, the teamwork as Burton drives, couldn't finish, and Jameel McKay picks up his partner with the finish. And look, there's a long way to go in this game. But Iowa State, that 7 0 run, right when you thought they were in a very bad spot. With Niang. One of their best players, one of the best players in the country on the bench, and he should probably be there for several more minutes with the four fouls. Here's Jalen Jones, strikes baseline, dunk finish. Nice explosive move by Jalen Jones, the leading scorer for this Aggie team. The great answer, and I like the draw up out of the timeout by Kennedy to get his best player of the basketball. But Jones just looks angry out there. And he plays angry. And I, I mean, that is a compliment. Abdul Nader, lucky to find Thomas after he left his feet. Shot clock winding down. Thomas knows it. Thomas gets it off. No good. McKay, though, grabs the offensive rebound. Now Burton, what a pass! <laughs> Deontay Burton. Deontay Burton looking like one of the best players in the country himself. Jones, three. McKay was fouled by Davis. What an incredible pass. Burton had nowhere to go with this basketball. Watch this pass. McKay finds him, and then he's just stuck because Davis does an excellent job, but delivers that thing over his head. A beautiful no-look pass to Jameel McKay for the finish. Deontay Burton doing it all for the Cyclones. Better be a top-10 play, that one. <laughs> and the dunk was fine. It was the pass that made it. One and one free throws. Iowa State already in the bonus with still nine minutes to go. Jamil McKay misses the front end. Man. And the Cyclones don't get a lot of points from the free throw line, but they're one of seven at the line in this game. Tipped by Davis, much too strong, stays with it. Ricochets out. Jones hustles, but off of Jalen Jones. A great effort from AM. Nothing to show for it. But you know, I don't love that shot by Collins. The way Texas AM got that lead was they were moving the basketball getting guys open looks that's kind of a forced look off of no passes there by Collins so 
Burton should go in the post. Jones switched out on Morris. Yeah, so Burton's got Collins on him. And they're going to let Burton know he travels. But see, they saw the mismatch, but they didn't know where to put Burton. Burton wanted to stay on the perimeter and face up and go, but he should have dropped down into the mid post about 15 feet and faced up on Collins and then tried to go. That's the 14th turnover for Iowa State. Trying to win on the road against a top five team. That makes it tough. Try to get Jalen Jones a look here if I'm the Aggies. Jones gets a look. Davis cleans it up. Because of his driving ability, he brought another defender and that freed up the offensive rebound for Davis. Morris one on one game. Good defense from AM. Now Nader, that little extra step, they call that as a travel. And I don't know about that one. They've had so many traveling violations, so many turnovers. Nader's frustrated, but he and the Cyclones lead by one. ESPN's exclusive prison. All right, Chris, thanks. 53-52, Iowa State on the road to this Big 12 SEC Challenge with a one-point lead. That last traveling violation, Miles, I don't know. Yeah, it's not a travel. If you watch, guys work on this type of footwork where they try to sidestep a play. One, two, right, left. That's not a travel. That is a play on the officials. Just because a, something doesn't look right doesn't mean that it's a violation. So Aggies can take the lead again in this back-and-forth matchup. Davis down low Jones Burton good effort to deflect that pass Caruso baseline Davis uses the shot fake with a foul what a pass by Alex Caruso probing the defense on the baseline flattens everybody out Tyler Davis circles back around makes himself available and takes that contact Coaching Chance staff. for the three-point play. Coaching staff said this young man just has a drive to be great. Look at the free throw difference. Nobody shot free throws great, but Iowa State one of seven. Morris has to get a touch and put him in a ball screen. There's the touch. Here comes the ball screen. AM defended it well. Morris has nowhere to go with it, so he shoots it. No good. Great defense by the Aggies. Under seven to go. Collins three. Way short. If you're Iowa State right now, how long does Steve Frome leave George Niang out for? Well, he's coming back to the scorer's table. He's got four fouls. Looks like he'll be coming back in. Offensive foul. The Aggies defense these last couple of possessions. Look at Caruso. He just anticipates. He beats Nader to the spot. Probably could have taken a little bit more contact, but you see the elbow go up. Good call by the official. So Caruso with the good defense. AM gets the ball back. That counts as another turnover. Nader's got three. And George Niang with his four is back on the court. Burton to the bench. Go to Jones against Niang. Try to draw the fifth. House fouled by Thomas. No shot. Foul on the floor. Third against Matt Thomas. And now Texas AM in the bonus. Daniel House. Front end of the one and one. Steve Prohm against his mentor today, Billy Kennedy, looking for a third top five win in the last four games. They beat number one Oklahoma, they beat number four Kansas, trying to beat number five Texas AM. House earns the second. 
Great college hoops still to come, plus a marquee matchup in the NBA. Oklahoma LSU, number one on the road. Kentucky, Kansas at Fog Allen at 7. 8.30 over on ABC Spurs. Cavs, one of two for Daniel House. Well, a lot of college teams looking for signature wins. So are the Cleveland Cavaliers and Tyron Lee tonight. That would count as one against the Spurs. Niang gets a touch against Jones. Got to be careful with those four fouls. Niang, what a move. He's so creative. He's hurting, though. And he gets up, and he is in a lot of pain. We saw him limping around earlier in this game. He's really hurting now. They might need to get him out of the game. I think they might. Burton's going to need to be ready. Caruso. Well, attack Niang. McKay helped defense with the block. And Niang, you can see him slowly. And uh, Niang tells his coach, I need a timeout. They'll take the timeout. Well, here you see on the offensive end, Niang with the beautiful crossover. And then the little one-two step to step through before the Trocha Morelos can get there. And if you're Iowa State, maybe you're hoping that it's just a cramp and nothing too major. Jeff Goodman, any uh, info, any idea about uh, George Niang and the pain he's experiencing? Jeff, you got anything? They're, wor they're working on George Niang right now. It looks like it's kind of that foot, and now he's cramping up a little bit, so the trainer's working on him. You know what? I've known George Niang a long time. He's not going to go out of this game quietly. One of three players in the country with those numbers. He is such a well-rounded player, so important to the Cyclones' success. And it looks like, at least for the moment, he will be out of this game. Or will he? Yeah. With five and a half to go. You can tell he doesn't want to be standing up on the bench. Deontay Burton has played well back in. Burton by the defense, wild shot. McKay there. McKay draws a foul. Fouled hard by Chocho Morelos. And here At comes some point, you figure Iowa State's going to have to make some free throws. Well, the problem is I know they're one for seven, but two of their worst foul shooters have shot six of those seven free throws, being Jameel McKay and Deontay Burton. Two shots for McKay. Makes that first one. Well, Niang, that was a quick rest, and Jeff was right. He does not want to be sitting out for this one. Non-conference game. Who cares? You're on the road, top five team in this environment. Right back in. McKay, one of two. Tie game, 56-56. With just over five minutes to go. McKay went for the steal, didn't get it. Jones, Niang with those four fouls, did not commit number five. Yeah, and he moved out of the way just enough to affect Jalen Jones' shot. You know, that might be another example of what you were talking about. Jones looking for the foul. Just go right to the rim. Jones is one of the best athletes in the conference. Try to throw that down. Niang, quick catch, quick dribble. No good on the shot. Here come the Aggies. Caruso, not a great pass. Great steal by Morris. Trocha Morelos pursues, but Morris scores. Monte Morris with super quick hands, two steals per game. The great anticipation and throwing that ball out in front of him, and nobody can catch him in transition. House is a guy that they like to have the ball in his hands. Loves a tough shot. That's a tough one. Three. from Caruso. Chrome, it's so loud in here. He had trouble barking orders for the set that the Cyclones wanted in that case, and they got it into the offense really late. Right. 
Rouse. Good. And another timeout for Iowa State. Daniel House. Morris first with the transition. Then the answer on the other end, Daniel House says, this is my house, knocking down the three. It a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney presented by Sonic. And we've got a good one, just as we expected. A sold-out crowd has been loud for the capital L. A versatile defensive lineup in with a lot of size for the Aggies. Iowa State ball down three under three to go Morris crossover no good rebound Aggies have it <laughs> Iowa State they've already beaten Oklahoma and Kansas in these last couple of weeks looking for a third top five win AM undefeated at home, a foul against the Cyclones. Texas AM, even with that number five ranking, I think looking for a signature win as they boost their tournament resume. Highest ranking in program history for Texas AM, number five, but coming off a loss. Free throw for House earns the second. After X Games Aspen tonight, stick around for Sports Center at night. Butcher and Steve Levy will have highlights for the NBA college hoops. The uh, action from Aspen, Australian Open Men's Championship preview, Sports Center at night. Lots to talk about today. Five point lead for the Aggies. Not a great pass, good catch from McKay. That was the same play they ran out of the halftime locker room. Niang was fouled, fouled on the floor before the shot. Jalen Jones called for foul and his shoe came off. That's his fourth personal. The foul and the shoe. Well, here's the drive by Niang. Good job of moving his feet. Jones comes right out of the shoe right there as Niang draws the foul. First free throw attempt for Niang in this one. And he missed it. Iowa State has left a lot of points out there with poor free throw shooting. They are two of ten at the line. And several of those misses have been front ends. Under two minutes to play. House attacks. Tip good. I think it was Davis. Niang a whistle. A foul against Davis. Well, this was something that hurt the Cyclones in the first half. House gets in the lane. He draws a couple defenders. No block out by McKay and Tyler Davis just doing some work on the offside, getting the tip in. He just got called for that foul. His fourth, two shots. That's a shooting foul. It's double bonus anyway. And Niang does get the roll. It has not been easy at the free throw line. Seven point lead was the biggest on either side in this game with 143 to go. And I'm surprised with how well Deontay Burton has played on both ends of the floor that Chrome hasn't had him in the game. Nader hasn't had a tremendously great game. I would love to see Burton have gotten some of the run here at the end of the game. I'm with you. Niang made them both. Nobody scores fewer points in terms of percentage for the line from Iowa State. So not a shock. That's a very dangerous pass. And now Niang commits personal foul number five. That was looking like a steal, maybe a dunk. Instead, Niang is out. They're trying to get him to sit down. It's, man, the kid in the background <laughs> really wants him to sit down. It's Collins at the line. 
And he misses the front end. Huge for Iowa State. Five point lead. Still plenty of time. Don't need a quick shot. Need the best shot. See if that's a good one. Rejected. Well, the help side defense, Kosa Morelos has been tremendously active here in the second half on both ends of the floor, denying Monte Morris. They have never had a basketball team in this program's history ranked as high as fifth in the country at Texas A&M. A team that has big time aspirations. And they're excited about it here in College Station. Speaking of teams with championship aspirations, Oklahoma is definitely one of them. Number one goes on the road against Ben Simmons and LSU healed against Simmons at five. Kentucky, Kansas. Kentucky playing much more like a championship contender here lately. That one at seven Spurs Cavs on the NBA side, 8.30 on ABC. And Kentucky will be coming here in a few weeks to challenge this Texas A&M Aggies. You're right about that. That'll be a huge game. The two blue blood programs, maybe of them all. I mean, you got lots of great programs, but nobody's won more games than those two. They'll go head to head at Fog Allen. But how fun has this atmosphere been here? Tremendous fan support. Students are packed. The champs, the Texas A&M and Billy Kennedy. Boy, what a job they've done getting this program being a top five team. And we love this event, the Big 12 SEC. It's given us these matchups. It's given us this game. Top 15 teams right in the middle of conference play to have a marquee non-conference matchup. Out of the Iowa State timeout. They are out of timeouts. No more for the Cyclones. Morris on the inbound. Does get it in. Mater. The three too strong rebound tapped out. It's off of Iowa State. And Nader has done that a couple times tonight. Get the ball back into Monte Morris hands. Let him be the playmaker that he is for this team. He'll get you an open shot if not if he doesn't create one for himself. And M five point lead with the ball. No fouls yet from Iowa State. The math has changed a little bit this year late game with the 30 second as opposed to the 35 second shot clock in terms of those decisions. Here's House down the lane. Wow. What a play by Daniel House. The curl off the weak side pin down. The help comes over too late. And Daniel House with the explosive throwdown. He has had, what, four dunks, and they've been explosive. <laughs> Biggest lead, eight point advantage, and a timeout for Billy Kennedy. That may be the one that does it. A 12 to 2 run in the last four minutes of this game. Texas A&M has been tremendously impressive tonight. They got Iowa State to play their type of basketball. They've made it a half court game for the most part. And then they've gotten big shots from Daniel House down the stretch here. I'm impressed. Good defensive team can score the basketball. They have a lot of options. Great size. A uh, real threat to make the Final Four in April. I think you're right. And the point you make, I mean, Iowa State averages right around 85 points per game. This is an explosive offensive team. They scored 49 in the second half against Kansas earlier this week in their win against the Jayhawks. They're stuck at 60 with less than a minute to go. Aggies have dictated the style of play today. Well, now Iowa State, you got to get points and you got to get them in a hurry. And you hear the chance. <laughs> An old Big 12 member now in the SEC. 
They're enjoying the SEC Big 12 challenge. Aggies go zone. Thomas avoided the travel. Morris three, no good. Rebound for Russo. Now the foul from Iowa State. Billy Kennedy's out on the court, arguing that that was a travel against Thomas. In the end, it works out fine for Texas A&M. And how great is it for this young man at the line? College Station native, was a ball boy here for the Aggies. Probably seen the program at some of his lowest points. Stuck with these guys, believed in Billy Kennedy. Billy Kennedy has given him a ton of confidence. And now he's helping lead this Aggie to a top five ranking. Cyclones. Just having such a hard time scoring. Burton with the dunk. 30 seconds to go. Every second precious, it'll be house fouled. And they call the foul against Jamil McKay. The one thing for the Cyclones, I mean, they come here into this environment, they are used to the loud crowds. And games against big time opponents. McKay becomes the second Iowa State player to foul out. That doesn't happen very often. Fewest fouls committed of any team in the country. Iowa State foul trouble has been an issue tonight. Well, that's because of the job that the Aggies did in attacking the paint, especially in the second half. Yep. They were the more aggressive team trying to get to the rim and put pressure on this Iowa State defense. So they've had Oklahoma, they've had Kansas, Texas A&M on the road. They go home and get West Virginia on Tuesday. Another top 10 team. Deontay Burton finds Morris wide open three. No good. Morris has been way off the mark from the outside. Now Burton thought he was fouled. They don't call it. House! What a win for Texas A&M. Aggies just dominated these last four minutes. It was a close game all the way through until the end. A very impressive performance by Texas A&M against a good Iowa State team. But the length, the toughness, just a little bit too much to overcome. So the Aggies bounce back from their loss on the road for the win with an exclamation point. 72-62 over a very good Iowa State team.